Hello, successful rescuing tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Shadow One Turns to the Union with me, Blue Ankylo. So, last episode, we went to the uh, Royale apartment and killed some drug dealers and rescued Coyote. We also um, avoided some hellhounds and then got mauled by a hellhound. So, win some, lose some. A little bit of yin yang, perhaps. Return to the Union. Despite Coyote's clear desire to stand on her own two feet, Keiko needs to help her through the door into the Union. Heads raise, and the front room of the bar falls strangely silent. Keiko stands by her side now, not speaking, his dark eyes flat with fury. Coyote presses a rag to her clawed-up face. She winces, but manages to keep control as she breathes in slow, deep breaths to manage the pain. Taking a closer look, you see her arm isn't much more than shreds of meat and broken bone held together by tendons and burn skin. A miracle she still has it by the end of the night. Well, that's not particularly nice. Um, I guess, you know, maybe we could have got there a little bit earlier. That would have been nice for her, but uh, at least she's alive, right? At least she's alive. And we got the gems. <laughs> Mrs. Kubota is tending... The bar herself when Peiko walks, walk carries the mangled and bleeding coyote into the union. As soon as the boss lady lays her eyes on the her miss lays eyes on her missing bartender, the place gets quiet fast. By the time she rounds the bar to meet you, Coyote is the color of wet speckle, and there's something new in her eye. Fear. This woman has faced down hell home hellhounds, but the sight of Mrs. Kubota has her staring at the floor and mumbling. What strange powers does this lady have? Woman, how dare you miss two shifts and then come back and bleed on my floor. Sorry, Mrs. K Kubota. Had a run that went... bad. So, Ka, I can see that. Your arm is a mess. Was this your crusade again? Do not answer. It only upset me further. You caused me to worry about you, Coyote, and that distracted me from my business. Hi, Miss Kubota. My apologies again. Cherry, take her downstairs to Dr. Castle. <laughs> well, no one no one fights with uh, Mrs. Kubota. And tell Castle to put something new and shiny where that arm used to be. Kubota, you can't afford an arm. I'm aware of your financial situation. When you're healed, we will discuss the concept of Giri, the debt of honor. Now go, lead elsewhere. So it looks like, well, she may have accrued some debt to her boss, but otherwise she'll live and maybe get a cool arm out of it. Her anger at Coyote's rashness slowly washes from her eyes and is replaced by tears. She sniffs, wipes them away, and inclines her head to you. Domo arigato, Blue Anculo. That girl is precious to me. It is not often that we see acts like these in the Barrens. You have performed a great service for my little family, and I welcome you into my home. Consider it yours while your work keeps you here. But we both know that words are mere air. Beyond my thanks, I offer you this remuneration. Take it as a show of respect. As a thousand noyen, which isn't bad. Now, we were able to argue Jake into giving us more, but... You know, I, I don't think this is the right time for that. <laughs> I am honored, Mrs. Kubuta. Thank you. You're most welcome. Now, for more than simple lodging, find there is more to the Union than meets the eye. Below us is a small facility, available exclusively for discriminating independent operatives like yourself. In it, you will find vendors selling the best gear the black market has to offer, a fully equipped cyberdock, and a secure place to rest when... The Drek hits the fan, as they say. And... This place is a safe house, too. Crazy. Indeed! Normally I require a percentage of the runner's income for the use of this facility, but as I said, you're family now. Consider it on the house. Venture the to gain entrance, play G-A-F-F-C on the piano. Hope you guys paid attention to music class. Awesome! So, we are now part of the team... Part of the family, even, of, uh, the Seamstresses Union. 
suppose we might as well ask about a few of these things while we're here. Is Mr. Delilah around? We have some uh, stones for him, I believe. In the back bar, doing business. What is this about Coyote's Crusade, by the way? Coyote grew up in the Royale, but managed to escape that life. However, her cousin was apparently not so lucky. He came to town about a year ago and fell in with the wrong circle. He was introduced to sim chips and became addicted to BTLs. Coyote has been tearing her way through the chip houses for months now, searching for him and acting as a one-woman cleanup crew. If you don't mind, how did you get involved in all this? I'm a former runner. Now I provide a safe haven and a marketplace for runners who need a trustworthy place to congregate and do business. Any Johnsons or Fixers here tonight? In addition to Mr. Delilah, you may wish to speak to Van Graaf. He is often stage side. Van Graaf is most often a receiver of found articles, but he occasionally has work. Nice. We're starting to make some contacts, we'll be able to get some jobs, or runs as we call them. But it'll be good times. I've still got I've got tons of karma now, which is also really handy. I should be able to equip that drone at some point. <laughs> I know I bought it and leveled up for it way a long time ago, but I'm sure we'll be able to unlock it soon. Van Gra. Van Gra is busy talking on his comlink, checking his heads up display and mention, sorry, motioning to a runner standing nearby. All at the same time, he is an intense little man. You get the sense he likes to look busy. I'm Van Gra. Make it quick. This is good. Talk to me. Alright, Mrs. Kubota says you're fixer. He still hasn't looked at you, he's going a mile a minute. Nothing for you tonight, sorry. Doing the thing right now, important thing. Talk to you later. Oh hey guy, one more thing. Covers his comm link for a moment, tilts his head your way, but you see he's still staring at his HUD. I'm a fence too, if you've got anything you need to unload, come see me. We might have something to unload. Uh, we'll have to wait till this call is over. I guess that's only fair. Uh, I think we got a little bit of information about uh, some BTLs or something we might be able to sell. You can probably check that. Let's see. Mission items. We've got the rare stones, the bar tab receipt, test tube pieces. Those are all like mission items. I don't know where it would show you stuff you've like downloaded, but I'm pretty sure we did that last time. Say hello to uh, Johnny Clean. Johnny leans on his seemingly brand new mop and surveying the crowd at the Union. So I'm pretty sure I can handle it, but uh, hey Johnny, looking for where Cherry took Coyote. Piano's a little out of tune. Check it out. <laughs> Alright, we'll have to play on the piano a little bit. Let's check with Mr. Clue. The hulking troll bouncer is in the immaculate suit stands as impassively as ever. The absence of dust on his broad shoulders is the only real indication the man ever moves. He nods to you when you approach. Evening. See Coyote is back, looking only a little worse for wear. Have you to thank for that? Uh, I'll give Peiko some credit. Peiko and I tracked her down. Always wondered what she saw in him. I guess he ain't all bad. Just glad she's back. Couldn't stomach losing anyone else so soon after what happened to Sam. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're just a big old cheap dog, aren't you? Not the comparison made of most trolls, but I'm happy to, to defy expectations. Ask him a few questions. He hasn't minded so far. That's that's a good sign. We haven't been thrown out yet. Um, I guess we'll just go through all of it. You hear anything else about Sam's death? People are saying it was the Ripper. But people say a lot of things about what they don't know, what they don't understand. I think I've already found a fence, but we'll ask him nonetheless. I think Von Graz is at the Von Graz is at the bar near the stage. Work with a cyber eye. Can't miss him. And of course, how long have you been working with Mrs. Kabata? Crawled in here after I gob... After I awoke. Mrs. Kubota took me in and gave me a job. Been here ever since. 
Do you have to pay extra for a manicure on hands that big? Not the size they charge more for. The blood under the fingernails. <laughs> Get you round. Alright, I still really like that guy. What's he my lording about in here? Got some probably elf girl dancing away. <laughs> Pretty detailed art. I almost I wish you could uh, zoom in a little bit further. This is as far in as I can go, so. Play some music. We'll just we'll just play. We're not gonna draw any attention to ourselves, just play the notes and get out of here. As you slowly peck the notes out on the keyboard, they spark a faint memory of wonder. Immediately forgotten as the entire piano slides to the left, revealing a hidden staircase. You descend the stairs into the Union safe house. What awaits us below? The entrepreneurial Mrs. Kubata has combined everything a runner might need into a one-stop shopping experience. Black market equipment, high-end magical stuff, and more things I can't read about. So Peiko's down here, got no bunks available right now apparently, and... Alright, so this is the stash I've been looking for, so I should be able to equip my drone now, much better. Signal Cyberdex. I'm probably gonna sell my grenade and my, uh, my drugs, honestly. We'll see how it goes. But now, I should have two drones following it. No. So I've got a Doberman and a Smoker Drone. Couple trolls in here. Watching TV, I guess. Oh. Well, there's an arm there. <laughs> Hope you guys aren't squeamish. Make it quick. I need to operate. Thanks for helping me out back there. <laughs> Looked like you could use a hand. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I couldn't resist. Okay, folks, I'm gonna have to ask you to go sit in the waiting area. Watch some Tribid or. Right, sorry, it wasn't TV, it was Tribid. This young lady and I have some work to do. Take it easy, Coyote. We'll be here when you wake up. Who said anything about me going to sleep? Just give me something to bite on. You're tough, kid. You're not that tough. Okay, Coyote. Take a look at your face. Leave it. Excuse me? I earned this face by being stupid. I'm gonna keep it. End story. Whatever you say, kid. One swift move, she sinks a syringe into Coyote's thigh. 99. Wow. Well, kinda of figured that. Watch some amazing Trivid, whatever sports ball game of the future you uh, prefer. You can imagine we've been watching it. Probably, I don't know, basket foot or something other ridiculous. It's probably more with neon lights. Would be like Cyberball and I don't know. I don't know. I, I have no idea what sports they play in the future. I don't even watch real sports these days. All right, so uh, what's going on? In Shadowrunner circles, the term doctor is often used quite liberally to describe any sawbones with the needle and thread. But in the case of the Union's resident medical expert, nothing could be further from the truth. The safe house boasts a fully equipped medical suite, complete with shama shama shaman sh it's gotta be shamanic. Shamanic? Shawoozle fish? Shaboozy fetishes. This is sixth world medicine of the highest caliber. The doctor herself is an unassuming sort, perhaps the type to go unnoticed entirely. If not for the sprightly spirit, I mean, yeah, I didn't, didn't mention that, but there's this thing here. The sprightly spirit perched on her shoulder, like her own personal gargoyle. The spirit's burning eyes follow you constantly, even as the doctor's own eyes are buried in her charts. However, she does look up long enough to acknowledge your approach. I'm Dr. Castle, and I understand you were, I understand you were instrumental in bringing Coyote back to us. Thank you for that. No, Sheen. Now, fixing up her arm, that was a piece of work. Surprisingly routine, as it so happens. You notice you eyeballing her the facilities. 
I can tell you're surprised to find a full service med bay under a dive bar in a slum. Don't be. This is a Shadowrunner bar, after all. For a purveyor of cyberware and trauma kits, there is no better place to set up a practice. Patch runners up, install and maintain their cyberware, and provide medical supplies for their runs. I may not be as mobile as Doc Wagon, but I'm the next best thing. Can I help you? So, trauma kits! Trauma kits are fully automated stabilization units that include a defibrillator, spray on synthetic skin, and medical nanomachines. They can save a runner's life if you move fast enough. So, if you're bleeding out, one of these can get you back on your feet? Exactly, but you have to be quick! This is Doc Wagon's own field tech, but even their stuff has its limits. So, we got Medical Shop finally. You can see these uh, trauma kits here. Not too expensive, I'd say. I mean, a little bit out of our price range right now. But if it's only a thousand noyen to restore a teammate 100% to total health, that's not too bad later on. Gold is 50%. Ooh, we've got gold and platinum trauma kits. We've got basic trauma kits for 25%. I guess probably your three tiers of trauma kits. We've got basic med kits. I think I have like a... Uh, Advanced one, yeah. To tell you the truth, it's not worth a lot of money, but I'm just going to sell these. I'm not going to really worry about drugs and grenades really on my main character, so... I don't really have any skill at throwing, and I don't think any of these drugs are going to help me. Yeah, strength and willpower plus two, charisma and intelligence minus two, so none of that helps me. Combat stim increases quickness plus two and AP plus one. I guess maybe I won't sell that. I don't see, like, the thing is, like, I don't have a lot I can do with AP because I'm not good at shooting, and I can only activate the two drones. I can't have a third or a fourth drone. So it's not like that's going to really make me any different. Yeah, I'll just sell it. I could sell stuff I've got equipped. No, nah, I'm going to hold on to this. I'll keep one Doc Wagon... Bunch of med kits and a couple drone repair kits. That's fine. I might. S I'm actually gonna sell this this gun. Um, we should be able to buy a cyber deck while we're down here, and it, we need to equip it as well. So I won't be able to equip the gun. So thanks, uh, Jake, for the gun that I borrowed. <laughs> I'm taking the money for it now. All right. So we made it over two thousand noyen. That's not bad. Let's see uh, what kind of cyberware you got. I don't know if we're gonna have the money for this right now. So. The way cyberware works, I don't think I've explained it a whole lot, but you have a, a basic essence of 6, I believe. I have a default minus 0 0.5 from the data jack, which you literally need to do, and you need it to do anything with rigging and decking. And anything else we equip will subtract from that essence. And uh, this is kind of related to your magical affinity. So if you're trying to cast magic and stuff, you don't want to lower your essence. It's bad for you. Um, if you're... I, I don't know if it affects this game, but, but even in the tabletop version, as your essence lowers, it's actually even harder to affect you with magic. Like, even a healing spell is less, affected on, uh, less effective on someone with low essence. So, um, I'm not, I think that applies to enemy magic, too. So, like, if you have a really low essence, you're kind of a robot, and things that affect um, humans, like biologicals, aren't necessarily going to work on you. Um, and I believe if you actually hit zero essence, really bad things happen to you in, in, the, in the tabletop world. <laughs> something about like a cyber zombie or something. I don't know. It's, it's probably not good. So what have we got? We've got a data jack right now. We could get a cyber leg or two. Um, they give you some more HP and some quickness, which isn't bad. We can get bone lacing for body points. That's uh, resistance and HP. You can get dermal plating for extra armor. Two armor is not bad, just for sticking it in your body. Uh, we can get better eyes for some crit chance, or cyber arms that seem to just give you HP right now. Now, the way I remember it, I don't know how the game does it exactly, but there should be different tiers of all of these. And actually, the better tiers should actually cost less essence. So, like, later on... Hopefully as the game goes, instead of a silver tech cyber arm, there might be like an EVO cyber arm or an Ares cyber arm, or I don't know who exactly manufactures cyberware, but the different companies should have higher rating, so probably more HP for even less essence possibly. We'll see how it... I don't know how it'll work in this game, but like right now, to fully cyber out, 
Uh, two, four, six, seven point five, eight point five, ten, eleven point five, I think, to put your entire body cybered. And that's double what you can actually have. So you'd have to pick and choose. Maybe later on you can fully kit out and still have enough essence if you're lucky. I don't, we'll see. Anyway, not right now. So, uh, by the way, I see shamanistic fetishes. Uh, shaman too? While modern medical knowledge makes surgery less disruptive than it used to be, it's still an ordeal for both the body and the spirit, requiring extensive recuperation to properly heal. I am trained in the ways of the spirit world as well as the scientific world. I do my best to heal the whole patient. She's probably like one of the best doctors around because she combines medical science with like magical healing, which is pretty awesome. So by the way, what's that on your shoulder? This little guy supports the healing rituals I perform on my patients after surgery, dramatically reducing their recovery time. Not standard procedure, of course, but the results speak for themselves. All right, we got ourselves a cool doc. Did I miss? Yeah, I, I must have missed Coyote when I uh, woke up, or when she woke up here. So, Cyber Arm Coyote, how's it going? Cyber Coyote? <laughs> Coyote looks both better and worse than you last saw her. All the gaping holes are plugged, and she's sporting a shiny new Cyber Arm. But now that the adrenaline has worn off, it's clear she needs some rest. Good morning. To the miracle of modern science, combined with Doc Castle's magic healing powers, I'm almost as good as new. Better, really. I think I'll compliment her arm. Thanks! Since Kubota will have me working it off for the rest of my life, knows your expression. You look like you've got something on your mind. Well, I do. I did have ulterior motives for rescuing you, besides just altruism. She flashes you a puzzle book. What kind of questions? Kind of questions about Sam. He's dead. Holy drick! Sam! Can't say I'm surprised. He was on a downward spiral for a long time. Can I tell you? Tell me about Sam. I hear you liked him. I did. He made me laugh. No one else seemed to like Sam's jokes, but I did. Me too. Me too, girlfriend. <laughs> you were friends? Um. Honestly, yeah, that's why we're here. I guess you could play it in different angles, but I think the way I'm reading this game, Sam and I go back, and maybe we've had some ups and downs, but he's been there for me, I've been there for him. He's the one, like, he didn't call her with his dead man switch. He called me. So if she thinks they were friends, then I'm definitely friends. Got it. Then you know, he was a charmer, wasn't he? I guess I knew him the best of everyone here. Sorry, he's gone. You served him the night he died. What do you remember? Pretty average night, regular crowd. As I remember, Sam was drinking with a guy named Armitage. Jake? Yeah, you know him? Oh yeah, he's a charmer too. Ooh, she bites her lower lip. I like gingers. <laughs> anyway, Jake and Sam were having a few, well, Jake was having a few. Sam was tossing them back, but good. Eventually he got loud, the way he sometimes did when he would mix drinking and who knows what, and Mrs. Kubota wanted him ejected. Mr. Clueway wasn't around. Can't remember why, so she asked Jake to do the honors. Jake dragged him out back into the alley, and that's the last I saw Sam. He said he got loud. Do you remember what he was saying? Hmm. Standard Sam Drek. How he grew up rich and didn't deserve this. How he hated his mother, how he loved his mother. Empathetic. How bad was he drinking? If it was just the drinking, it would have been bad. Wouldn't it? If it was just the drinking, it would have been bad. But Sam wasn't the monogamous type. He dabbled in everything booze, chips, drug, drugs, loved the nitro, whatever he could get his hands on. It wasn't always like that, but once he got sick, he started using more and more stuff to try and forget about it. Wait, sick? Dying, didn't you know? Yeah, everyone could tell. You just look at him and see he was a walking corpse. It had to be the drinking. Then he disappeared for a while, and one day he came back all better. Looked good even. All better. Just like that. Then his mum helped him out. Never said how, though. 
So, I'm just gonna just just pause for a second here, guys. He probably had liver failure. <laughs> he was he was dying of over drinking, life of alcohol, and and I I would assume probably that most of these drugs she was talking about are likely filtered out by the body's liver, probably. So he's probably killed himself by killing his liver. Looked like everyone thought he was dying. He went away for a while. Something with his mom. She eventually died too. I don't know what that's all about. And he comes back healthy. So maybe she gave him his her liver or bought him a liver somehow. Isn't that what the Emerald Ripper stole from him? And if it is, isn't it very similar to the story about the girl, old blind Lucy, who was mostly blind, but then one day got some cool new eyes, and then was killed by the Emerald Ripper and had her eyes stolen? I think I think I'm seeing a trend here. I think. I have to I have to keep asking questions. So how about enemies? Enemies. It's hard to say. Sam party hard, and when he did, he ran his mouth pretty good. Got his ass kicked out on more than one occasion. But no, I don't think he had any enemies. At least none that I'm aware of. Except Ren Raku from two years ago. She doesn't know about that. Where'd Sam live? On the streets, mostly. He'd occasionally convince someone to let him flop on their couch, but he'd always overstay his welcome and get kicked out after a few days. Sometimes I'd sneak him down here so he could crash in one of the bunks. He used one that night before I saw him last. Thanks, Coyote. Now I need you two to do something for me. Keiko's still here? What do you need, babe? Yeah, you watch it, kid. I need you to talk to Mr. Delilah for me upstairs about the Royale run. He's usually upstairs. Tell him I didn't get the gems. Maybe I can take another run and add it when I recover. I have the gems. Like, we're good. I'll just give him the gems. Take the money. I'm sure it's fine. First off, though, looting! The bunk is a mess and reeks of booze. Searching through the sheets, blankets, and pillow, you find an old photograph that has seen a lot of wear. The picture is of a blonde boy and girl, both about age 14, sitting on the dock at the edge of a lake. They appear to be twins. The boy has his arm tight around the girl's shoulders and is mugging for the camera. The girl is planting a kiss on his cheek while making rabbit ears behind his head with her finger. Well, assumedly this is Sam and his twin sister? I didn't hear about that before. Let's look at the back. Written in a woman's hand are the words Sam and Jessica, Lake Salmonish State Park, Summer 2040. I've heard Jessica before somewhere. Um... Wasn't that... That's, that's a photo we found, but didn't I also get... Wasn't there something on his corpse back at the beginning that was like a note that we couldn't read? It was kind of illegible. I think it had, like, Love Jessica on it or something. I think. I don't know if there's any way for me to check, unfortunately, though. There, there, there's... You'd think there would be a way to look back. Like, it should have been a mission item, but... Oh, you can you can learn about how to play the game, too, if you're having a hard time. That's nice. But, uh... Oh, hey! Lingo! Chummer! Familiar or friendly greeting, meaning friend or buddy. Red sticks! I'm sure you guys can figure that out. Cyber deck, yeah. Cyberware is that stuff. Deck. Oh, Drek! Common curse word. Dump shock. I don't think we've heard this one yet. Oh, that's for being forcibly ejected from the Matrix. I'm sure that'll happen eventually. So the fence, standard fence stuff. Frag is, well, Frack, Frag, Frel, they're all F words, you know what it is. Gutter punk, street hoodlums, ice, intrusion countermeasures. Oh, yeah, okay, we'll see some of these in the Matrix. Um, when we're doing like decking and stuff. Jack, Jack Point, meat space, decker slang. I think I mentioned that earlier. That's what us deckers, which I'm barely a decker, call you people in the real world. Uh, Mr. Johnson, just a corporate agent. Nerps. Trendy painkillers. I think I've seen those on some flashing signs outside. Noyan, money, 
Simpsons. Sensory broadcast. Recorded elsewhere. Okay, that sounds like kind of how they were doing PTLs. SIN is your system identification number. Now you know what it stands for. The method used by the government to track activities of registered citizens. TRID! Short for Tridio. 3D holographic successor to old boring... So, that's the TV. It's the, the Tridio. <laughs> the Tribid. <laughs> awesome. And then BDL. And... Oh, I didn't notice this page before. That was nice. So if you want to see more about all the various characters that are in here, I think I think we'll be okay though, honestly. Yeah, I'm not gonna look at all this stuff. Just just the slang. All right, let's uh, before we go upstairs, let's finish exploring down here. I do know there's some more shops. Plus we have a quest to go to talk to everybody. Algernon. Past the bar, the edges of the safe house become somewhat indistinct due to the magical haze surrounding a particular elf. The man seems only half of this realm, his mind wandering the far horizons of astral space, while his body peddles his otherworldly wares. Good evening, young human, and welcome to this humble home that we call the Union. I am Algernon, after you. To ease your way through the sixth world, I offer you the best in magical foci, smells, and finishes for the conjuring of spirits. Well, unfortunately we can't do much here. Um, I expect he's got a bigger selection than the guy upstairs. Definitely looks that way to me. It would be pretty cool to have a mage that can like hit people with lightning to steal their AP so they can't do stuff. That would be pretty cool, right? Looks like... like I don't mind checking these out a little bit, because I'm sure people will be casting them on us at some point. <laughs> so, you know, Fireball might do more damage, and you can cast it more often. But, loot, like, if everybody gets 2 AP per turn, stealing 1 AP away while dealing damage is really good. So, like, that's a, seems to me that's a pretty powerful spell. Uh, Mana Bolt does less damage, but ignores armor and targets... Willpower, I assume, instead of body, so they have to resist with will. So it's probably better against, like, trolls that normally could resist fire or lightning damage, I guess, and maybe can't resist mana, just sort of magical damage. Lowers armor. Not by a whole lot, though, at this level. Decreases hit chance. Increases armor. Acid damage. That could be pretty bad, too. It's only one round, but I assume... Acid Stream 2, 3, 4 might last a little bit longer. So it does, it, even at level 1, it does 15 damage, which is more than the Fireball does. So that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Stun Bolt steals an AP. Costs 2 AP to cast. Doesn't do any damage. To the targets. I wonder if it's an AoE. But I was saying, I was thinking like, Lightning Bolt's 1 AP and damage and AP damage, so might be better. Mind Wipe. Target ignores enemies, so it's kind of like a stun of some sort. Mana Ball. This should be- yeah, this is AoE, okay, yeah, it says AoE. So this... this... Yeah, these aren't- none of these are AoEs, it has to say AoE there. Mana Ball, that sounds pretty cool then. Healing spell, dispelling spell for all of your debuffs and such. Power bolt looks very, very weak as a like default attack. Man, there's a lot of stuff here. We'll just go through them kind of quickly here, just so I know for later. Og, AOE. I guess you just cast it. It's kind of like a smoke grenade for your your own guys. Quiet bomb. I don't know why we would use this. An AoE reduces any sound made. I mean, maybe we'll have like a stealth mission at some point, and that might be useful, but I haven't I haven't seen anything like that yet. Air barrier sets five light Now that's kinda cool, I think. Is that set five light cover barriers that last three rounds? Anyone that enters takes one AP damage. Does that mean you can hide behind them? You can just make some cover in the middle of the map? Or is it more, you put this as a barrier so that if the enemies walk through, they lose AP? Target of the silent spell makes no noise. Okay, so this doesn't... 
unlike, say, Final Fantasy Silence that, like, mute, that stops mages from casting, this just, this is just, like, makes you quiet. Haste, I would expect, especially higher levels of haste, tend to be really, really powerful. So right now we have, we spend 2 AP to get 2 AP over 2 turns. So it's not that great right now, but I bet you it gets better. Key casting for your adepts. So... These should work a little different, at least some of them should, I think. Some of them should be, like, equippable. Yeah, just passive, equipped. You get light cover bonus to magic spells just naturally. And at level 3 you get heavy cover bonus to magic spells. Like, that's pretty cool. It doesn't cost anything, just buy it. Well, it costs money. And then you just equip it, and bam, you've got magic resistance. This looks pretty good as well. Now you have to cast it, I think. Well... Okay. It passively decreases all damage by 2. And then if you activate it for AP, it actually reduces it even more. Like, that seems actually quite amazing. Just default, minus 2 damage. If you want to, buff yourself with a huge armor or even better. Mystic armor, same kind of idea. Just not quite as strong as that, I guess. It also only costs 1 AP rather than 2, so that's nice. Quick Strike... So... It's just a 0 AP. It's basically a free action that does 6 damage. And then it has a cooldown. So you can't do it every turn, but every probably 3 turns you can just do 6 damage to somebody next to you. Pretty good. Medium cover. Cool. I guess I only noticed light and full, but there must be medium, so I have to pay more attention to little symbols. Counter strike. Um. The adept turn ends, so you cast this at the end of your turn. Will counterattack any weapon anytime they are attacked. With any weapon anytime they are attacked. So just kind of like Overwatch, I guess, except a spell. A little bit different. Stride, gives you more movement. Passively gives them more movement. Activate for even more movement. Not bad, again. Just, if you're gonna have like a, a melee adept, that's pretty cool. Manifest. Powerful magic punch ignores armor for 10 damage. That's not bad. It's pretty good, actually. And killing hands. Passively, your unarmed damage gets plus 4. If you activate it, your unarmed damage goes up by a lot. Okay, adepts look kind of cool. That's that's pretty neat. I like it. And then this stuff is like summoning different forces of different elements. Elementals. Okay, air elementals, earth elementals, fire elementals, water elementals, and lower levels. Of the thing. Okay. I mean, it's nice to know, like, eventually we're going to be able to make our own team of runners, and I'll have to decide who I'm going to bring and I'll have to sort of recognize what spells do what, so I think that's worth learning a little bit about. What do you mean, no creds? Alright, who's this? Eric Mersman. Change your clothes, change your life, right? Not only will you look better, not that you look bad now or anything, but each one will help to keep you on the right side of the ground. Take a look. So this is the, I assume, more advanced armor shop. I think this is new. 4 armor, 3 HP. Again, this is still better than our armor. Ours is 2 plus 1 intelligence, but I don't think I'm going to be upgrading anything right now. Yeah, I think the black hat will be fine. I am disappointed that we lost our cool shades, but I'm sure we'll find some better armor eventually. Alright, nothing, nothing to see here, kids. Next, who's this guy? TB Gunther or something. Gruberman, sorry. Theodore Buster Gruberman is a well-groomed orc, dressed with a precision that suggests the straight lines of a military officer's uniform. His hair is cropped short, high and tight as they say, and the neatness this presents is only compromised by the uneven tusks protruding from his mouth. Sorry about that. The only other defect in this picture of perfection is the man's cybernetic right arm, which is obvious enough to be noticeable, but not so obvious as to ruin the line of his suit. So it's a pretty good cyber arm. T.B. Gruberman. When he speaks, the orc's voice is soft and thoughtful. And he talks almost exclusively in numbers, calibers, ranges, rounds per second, arc of fire, 
Razoring factor, tensile strength, and, of course, price. So soft and thoughtful. Bunker Buster Gruberman, at your service. Friends call me Buster. I also answer to Sergeant Sir and even Theodore on occasion. Anytime you're in the market for firearms, ammunition, or ordnance, I'm your man. What exactly do you sell? Things that go bang in all shapes and sizes, plus other odds and ends. On occasion, consider me your own personal armory. All weapons are guaranteed to meet strict UCAS military spec or your money back. In addition, I can handle routine maintenance, repairs, and upgrades if you so desire. And if that wasn't enough, I also teach a safety instructional course every weekend. This week we're covering bayonets. Mark my words, they're making a comeback. So, what can I get you? I imagine it's like a promotional video for kind of like old school join the army stuff except with fancy future guns. So we've got a new gun, a new drone store as well as guns. Unfortunately we can't buy the better drones yet. Uh, I think it's going to be one or two more missions before we can get better drones. So I mean there's really no need for us to get up to class A or class S drones unlocked seeing as we can't buy them anyway. And be, to be fair, these were like a thousand bucks each. We wouldn't be able to afford the better ones, really. You can buy grenades here. 12 damage, AoE 2 for the cheap... Pretty cheap ones, really. That's not bad. If you were, if you had a reasonable throwing skill so you could throw them long range, that would be pretty good. Concussion grenade. If you had a group of enemies that would uh, lower their AP as a group, that's not terrible. I mean, at best, it just wins you... Like, you spend one AP for somebody else to lose one AP if you hit them. Maybe a group to lose one, but it doesn't sound that great to me. So there are smoke grenades, similar to the smoke spell. Med kits, drone repair kits. It's all good stuff. And weapons. Now I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here, I just want to have a quick look. Um, so we got pistols, fairly low base damage, medium range, and capacity for number of bullets. Uh, Uzis, SMGs have just barely more damage than pistols, same range, and generally more capacity. So pistols, Uzis, pretty similar. Here we start getting to real damage with the shotgun. The difference is it's short range and they don't necessarily hold a lot of capacity, so you have to reload them a lot. Now there might be a shotgun skill that gives you free reloads, so that wouldn't be such a big deal, but for us that would be a pretty big pain. You'd shoot, shoot, and then next turn reload and shoot, and shoot and then reload, and and how it would work. The AoE is kind of cool though for hitting a whole bunch of enemies all close together. We got ranged, we got rifles, good range, good damage, better than pistols and submachine guns, long range which means you don't lose the accuracy so quickly, and lots of bullets. I think still a, a good a good default weapon and I think I picked the right one to sell. Do you notice the cost of these things? If all I was planning to do was get the free gun from Jake and sell it, I picked the right weapon because it's the most expensive of the low, low, low level um, guns that I can see. Uh, and again, there's some, there's also melee combat, but who does that, right? All right, thanks for the chat. One last guy. Also, isn't that the clean, the the Mr. Clean? <laughs> Every inch of the tech alcove is covered in a chaotic patchwork quilt of circuit boards, chips, wires, displays, and a million other things you can't identify. I can identify it. We're smart. In the eyes of the Technobit storm stands a dwarf, immaculately dressed and supremely calm. I know that look. Don't let the size of the shop fool you. I can get any Matrix hardware or software that exists. And if it doesn't exist, then I can get it made for you. Any questions I can answer or anything, any gear you need. Now, I'm going to go through these for the sake of you at home. I know this video is going a little long, but I want to finish up this section before we end up. Um, this will explain some of the decking stuff. So what's a deck? You jack into the matrix or in the context of a run when you jack into the local node of the facility you're in. The deck determines how many programs and ESPs you can carry and the firepower of your base matrix attack. Decks have IP. When a deck's IP is reduced to zero, you get booted from the system and it'll hurt. So that's kind of like HP in terms of matrix combat. That's the deck. What's a program? A program in the matrix allows you to defend your avatar against countermeasures and enemy deckers. There's a wide variety of different programs for attack and defense at different power levels. As you progress as a decker, you can use more powerful versions of these programs. 
So they're kind of like magic spells that work in the in the um, in the matrix. What about ESPs? Johnny, you want to take this one? Sure. When you infiltrate a facility on a run, you have a team. When you jack into the matrix, you're all alone. That's where ESPs come in. An ESP is a highly advanced artificial life program, which when you deploy it manifests as another team member in the matrix. Different types of ESPs have different abilities. So they're kind of like my drones, except you have to use an item to summon them rather than turning them on to summon them. And I did double check the research. They're not consumable like sh shamanistic totems. I believe you have to buy one and then you use it in combat. And then when the combat's over or when the, when the, sh when the spirit dies, it disappears and you have to buy a new totem to, to summon another one. But for ESPs, you don't have to do that, and for drones, you don't have to do that, which is kind of why I'm doing it like this. It's cheaper. So what do you got for sale? All right, so he does actually have the tier two um, decking kit already. I can't get tier two drones, so I might go straight to decking three and just buy this rather than, than buying the cheap one and having to resell it a minute later. Um, it does obviously give me, you know, more H- actually, yeah. The big difference here is that you get more AP in the Matrix. Starting with 3 AP is going to be way better than starting with 2. More programs, more ESPs, evasion, I don't know, a little bit of a difference, but more AP, that's amazing. So before I do anything, let me have a quick look at my karma. Oh, I'm being rude, let me also introduce you to our resident Decker and my good friend Johnny Clean. While in the same overalls that you saw him upstairs. Down here, leaning over a workbench, crammed with circuit boards and cables and chips, Johnny Clean seems a totally different person. You get the impression that Johnny was once as hot and as invisible as the most infamous Deckers today. Good to see you down here. Happy to be of help if, if I can be. Well, we might as well talk to him first. How is decking used? The decking skill is often used just on terminals in the real world. We've seen that. To get information, hack doors, but occasionally a run will have the option to, or the requirement, to go into the local matrix LAN of the facility you are infiltrating in order to gain access to valuable information or control more important things in the real world. So, at the very beginning of this Let's Play, I mentioned how Deckers don't do a lot in normal combat. Except for when you need them, when it's required to go into the local matrix LAN. You can recruit a Decker as part of your team later on and have them do it for you. But then one of your four party members is not very useful in combat, which is why I chose personally to do decking as a side serve skill. So I'll be good enough, even if it's not my my uh, my major or my specialty, and we should be able to get through these mandatory scenes as well as open some doors and locks. And I'll still be useful at combat because of my cool drones. So, by the way, why are you dressed as a janitor? And did I stand out upstairs? Nope, janitors never do. When I was younger, I had a rep for getting in and getting out of systems so cleanly that no one knew I was there. Half the matrix runs that half the matrix runs that earned my rep, who earned me my rep, were made possible because I was able to get inside the facility posing as a janitor. Now it's just sort of part of me. So, stealth guys, shadow running. That's cool. Is it true you're part of Echo Mirage team? <laughs> Let me take this one. Listen, I've known this guy for over a decade, and he's been smart enough not to tell me. So he sure as hell is not going to tell you anything about those days. For your health and his, best let the subject drop. Maybe somewhere we'll find some information about this, and we can sell it back to him for big money. Someone will have a server with that on it. Alright, so we've completed all of the optional objectives. That's good for us. Right, sell the stones. We'll do that all next episode. I just want to finish up down here first. So I do have a fair bit of karma we can spend. Um, I haven't really decided all of it, but I am going to get decking three for sure. That way I'll just buy the Renraku Craftwork instead of buying the Sony. Uh, I'm not going to worry about going up higher than that for now because it's already expensive enough. Um, I might just pick up drone damage. I think, yeah. Plus two damage from our drones is probably worth it for sure. That leaves me with four... Um, not going to do strength. Could do dodge. Probably not going to do ranged combat. Could do quickness for like dodging hits. Could do body for HP. Could do like willpower for resisting magic. 
I think I might go for Charisma 4 next. The earlier I get this, the more options, the, the more opportunity we'll have to use etiquettes, and I think that would be pretty cool. Just to unlock some more dialogue. Uh, I mean, combat-wise, you know, the more points I put into here, the better we're going to do. Um, the next, the next tier for drone combat is armor. Oh man, that would be so good, though. Okay, I want to get... My, my plan then will be drone, like, charisma to level 4, and then the next thing is to try to get drone combat 6. It's going to cost a lot. Um, that's 5 points, plus 6 is 11 points, and 22, and then 33. So it's going to cost me 33 karma total to get what I want, and that will make my drone so much better. Um, I mean, they, it just keeps getting better as they get higher. Well, that level might not be that big a deal. Oh man, and then that's even better. Holy smokes. I mean, that's a t that's a long, long way away, but... but... Yeah, more AP, more accuracy, more damage. Yeah, that stuff's pretty good. I, I gotta admit, those would be nice. And I mean, probably class S drones are awesome anyway. Um, but I don't want to focus just, like... I don't want to over-focus in drones and spend, like, I think, like, early game you'll probably get small karma and later game you'll get bigger karma gains. So I'm not gonna, like, 33 is a lot. So let's get a few other little cheap things first. I might consider some ESP control, just the first couple tiers. Oh, I was gonna get the- yeah, let's do this. This is pretty cheap. Let's get biotech to 2. So now we can see enemy HP. I think that'll be useful immediately. And I'll try to get charisma to 4 next. And then after that, if I feel like, like after we do a couple combats, if I feel like a little bit of dodge, willpower, body is useful, we might pick up one rank in each of those. Just cheap, low level ones that just cost us four or five points, rather than starting to save up for that big 33. Because that's, that's going to take a while. And we'll have a little bit of charisma, a little bit of uh, physical defense, stuff like that. That should work out. That's my plan anyway. So, let me just buy this quick. I also didn't really, uh, this has definitely been a longer episode than I intended. Uh, let me buy the Cyberdeck first. So, 750 for the good one. And, like, okay, there's a lot of stuff here. And I'm just gonna zip through this really quickly. We can have two ESPs equipped to this thing. Um, I don't know exactly what they all do. I know that attackers are pretty standardly good. And, I don't know... What else is good? Um, I I have to take them into 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 Matrix to see, and I haven't done that very much yet. I honestly don't think I need to spend a ton of money on these guys right now. I think one ESP will be more than enough to get us through the early Matrix combats, even though we could bring two, and we would be more powerful. Certainly, definitely, like considerably stronger with two ESPs at a time. But I think with this deck, we'll already be pretty good. And I also know from sort of meta knowledge that we will unlock level 2 programs very shortly. So spending a ton of money on the level 1s don't make too much difference. Keeping in mind I can buy all of these if I want, but I can only take 4 of them into Matrix Combat at the time, until we get a better deck. So I'm just gonna buy a couple little things that, uh, that look reasonable. I'm gonna buy... What's it called? Killer is just a straight up one straight up attack for one AP. That seems pretty reasonable. Medic is for healing, which seems reasonable as well. And maybe two more cheap ones. You can get a little buff there, you can reduce AP. Shield gives you more defense. I I bet you the shield ESP can do that one. Um I don't know how the firewall works. Might be like a wall that protects you, sort of, or stops the enemy. This one seems alright. Um, like, we've got a spell that does 75 damage. This one does 50, but then 25 per turn for two turns. So it's it does more over time. This is like a debuff that makes them take more damage from any source. It's not... I mean, if you could go degrade into erosion, that would probably do amazing, right? If you did this first... Then this would do 75 damage and then 50 per turn, I think. That would be pretty ridiculous, actually. Um, an AoE attack, that might be good to have. Sure, we'll pick that up. So we've got a single target, a heal, an AoE. Uh, 
that's like a slow spell. Let's just pick up this. I don't know how important this is right now, but you can reduce the alarm state of the system, and I think that might help. So this is spending a ton of our money, which is a little bit a little bit much actually. But um, I don't think there's anything we can buy right now, so okay, I'm I'm alright with that. And we will be able to sell like once we unlock level two stuff, we'll be able to sell them back for like 75% or something, and that'll be fine. Okay. All right, I think we've definitely spent enough time exploring the underground here. Next episode, which will hopefully be a normal length episode, we will uh, head upstairs. Um, we'll deal with the quest we're on, which is deliver the stones. And we will try to figure out what the next lead is, I guess. We've, uh, we've healed up Jessica and she talked a little bit, but I didn't get any super obvious clues from her. So uh, we'll have to see you next time. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you've enjoyed, and have a great day.